um, I've been doing a little bit of that. I've been doing, I did a couple stuff on YouTube, a couple things on Instagram, but you know, it didn't really work too well. Um, you kind of get loads of uh, what are they called copyright re or takedown requests, right? Copyright or takedown trademark requests from um, record labels coming in and jacking your shit. And then on YouTube, sometimes your stuff gets copyrighted as well, which is probably why people go on Twitch, right? Because there's less tracks of you get taken down. Because I think the mix I uploaded on YouTube, I think might have been. I don't know of the 10 tracks maybe two, six or seven got muted i had to mute them because you know they were they got copyright struck so that wasn't good but i thought i'd link to a show that i watched over the weekend that i thought was really good because i'm again i'm a bit on the fence with the whole um online uh video streaming thing of dj says i think primarily because most of the time if i am watching a boiler room you're watching it specifically half well not half i'd say 70 80 percent of the reason why you're watching a boiler room is what somebody that you like right an artist a collective a club night whatever it may be someone that you've got an affinity towards and then the other 20 percent or 30 percent will be to see who else is in the room catch a vibe feel like you're there it might be a bit a good a good bit of a warm-up before you go on your night out as well um and just in general and it's good just to kind of people people doing in the background it's just fun kind of people watching so when you take out the people, you take out the clubbing environment and you just have somebody standing in a room playing music, I guess because I do it myself, it can get a bit boring, it can get a bit stale, um, it can be a bit flat. So sometimes I've seen it work really well when it's a vinyl DJ, right? Because you know the Dax J set recently on Boy Room was really good for that. I'll play that actually next. But the first one I thought was really good was over the weekend was um, Dixon did a... Uh, a little boiler room set that he played for them and it's funny because dixon in an interview recently with um electronic beats i think a few months ago a couple months ago maybe he did mention kind of like in a backhanded compliment way that he wasn't really that infused or that you know crazy about the way that they uh live stream their dj sets on boiler room he thought it was a little bit you know a little bit basic a little bit samey samey and um you hear a lot of people say that right when it comes to cdjs i think mostly or you know the ad, when people move to vinyl cdjs i think dvs once said it about that he felt that sometimes the problem with cdjs is that it didn't it didn't help people become more creative it just made them more lazy because obviously there's a sync button you got the waveforms um you know whatever there's loads of things that are in your kind of favor you know don't really have to you don't even have to loop it on beat you just hit one button and it loops it uh via the beats that you want so he felt as if like it made people a little bit too safe they didn't take any risks so whereas when you're playing with vinyl you had to because it's so mechanical and you had to require so much of your motor functions you couldn't help but be attached to the music you couldn't just coast by looking at the waveforms waiting for it to blip and then drop another track in or waiting for it to kind of level out and then make something else and you had to be really attentive to what was going on so it required a lot of you i think he mentioned something like he always felt a lot more tired a lot more fatigued after a vinyl set than he did do with cdjs that's why he mentioned that when he does play on cdjs devious what i'm saying he would always request having free turntables or free cdjs because it allowed him to be more creative with his sets right to layer on a you know to layer on some bass on top of a hi-hat maybe loop this other deck it required a lot more it kind of pushed him more as a dj and i think that's what kind of dixon was kind of getting at with the live stream on boiler room it's a little bit you know it's just a stick in the camera on the tripod and just recording somebody playing in a club it might be too dumb or whatever blah, blah blah but to be fair to the boy room they have they have kind of improved their their way of doing things i think some of the places that they put the first the kind of put the raves in the spaces are really interesting it's not as obviously awe inspiring as a circle you know that youtube channel but it is pretty good and they always have somebody now um with a rig kind of going in a crowd and filming people who want to be filmed it can be a bit difficult you know if you go to berlin or something people aren't necessarily that up for having cameras stuck in their faces so it can depend on where you are but i think they're making some concerted efforts to move and to kind of evolve that way of presenting the dj sets but obviously dixon had to kind of you know do it his own way and really kind of uh lay the marker down and he employed this weird sort of like um what do you call it augmented reality sort of thing virtual reality sort of vibe where essentially the entire i think it was um at the store i forgot what the store is called in berlin is it mute the noise i forgot the name of the record store that innovation have but essentially kind of uh blacked out the entire store as apart from maybe the wall with all the debt or the vinyl and the entire surroundings around him changed into these different landscapes which i'll definitely show you now on screen because it's better to just show you than to describe it with my shitty descriptions here it is 
So if you listen to the podcast app, um, he's essentially playing on the, you know, playing his set. He's got his uh, rotary mixer and his CDJs and to the right of him is sort of like the wall with all the vinyls and shit. And essentially everything else has been blacked out, which I think kind of helps with the augmented reality. And then if we kind of, let me just see if I can skip forward. And if you skip forward a little bit, just blow the sound on here as well a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. So if we skip, if we go a bit back over here, you'll see that. I should, I should. Yeah, around here. Which is quite cool. It's all dark and dark a little bit. incredibly immersive like you get the whole 360 turning of the camera he gets all pixelated it gets all weird. he goes into little bits of pixels as well kind of skip forward a little bit more and then you get this amazing like underwater kind of uh, backdrop as well Also make things even better this was um in part due to them promoting the transmodena ep that i've just listened to actually today on my run which is this this represents transmodena which basically features a lot of the tracks he's been playing during his transmodena um residency in ibiza and i think after the actual performance all of those tracks were available to purchase on bank camp and on the music the money will go directly to the artist you know to support them during this sort of tough time so that was a really cool little tie-in so again i think presentation wise it's a lot more you know there's a lot more to it than the stuff that you might have seen you know in other places or the standard sort of like you know black table with a cloth over it that makes it more interesting but also for going forward it could be a good way it could be a good way of sort of like presenting it could be a good way of sort of like um how do you say it could be a good way of maybe presenting the idea of somehow putting together a festival imagine imagine you're putting together a festival um like a coachella <laughs> for instance right but you want to justify um charging viewers to watch a show at home live stream it because you know i'm assuming to set up a live streaming uh, platform for a festival isn't the easiest thing to do right um that's why a lot of the bands that record, or a lot of the acts or artists these days that record shows, they don't necessarily have people come in recording the live show that you would do previously, right? Loads of heavy metal bands or rock bands in the past would always have a live album they kind of put out so fans could have an idea of what they sounded like live and then you'd hear that, you'd be like, oh my God, sick, I want to see, I want to see them perform next time they're in my town. They don't do that now. So they, they usually, you, you rely on people sharing videos of you on Instagram or on youtube or any other social media platform right that's what you usually rely on you don't really care about you know having somebody come in and plug into the soundboard and have your thing recorded crisply because it costs a lot of money but imagine if somehow they were able to your innovation was able to somehow um take that setup um plug it into a club where you're playing at and then live stream it on a dedicated platform they kind of built from the ground up or maybe it's a specific link to a disc a specific link to a private twitch channel something along the lines that you could do right or even just what well, did they do that with the um, did something similar with the what's his face uh with the logan paul and ksi boxer match where they had where you could basically buy it as a pay-per-view so that would be quite cool i think because i think if you're gonna pay for a pay-per-view of something that you're already kind of are conditioned to have for free from boiler room you have to maybe raise the stakes a little bit and provide a really unique experience. Maybe they send you a pair of, you know, VR 3D glasses in a post beforehand, or maybe they give away a few beforehand so you can just get a feel of it and kind of really um, elevate the level, the kind of online clubbing experience. I don't know. Maybe that might be a good way. Again, it might require a lot more effort. It might require more money. It might be a logistical nightmare. I don't know, but I could see it going that way. So that was one of my favorites. That was one of my favorites of the weekend. And then the last one was um, Dax J played again. So so 
obviously you, if you have a backdrop it obviously helps and then the other way it helps too if you're going to live stream on online is that if your person live streaming is playing on vinyl because vinyl intrinsically requires all your senses all your you know motor neuron functions your complete attention you can't just coast by be on your phone and fuck around right you've got to be attentive to what's going on um, and Dax J is a really good example of that he absolutely smashed it <laughs> in the show notes you guys to see but it's uh Daxia live from isolation they're doing a few of these actually i think they're just kind of reaching out to some of their family and friends and getting them to put together a little mix and so far i think the selections have been pretty cool um i think they did one with all the big clubs in berlin and had them do different sort of like off-site little events i think ellen Elliot did a really good one with um uh what was it um with grace muller a nice good set there and obviously the whore how you pronounce it Hore. um YouTube channel has a few on there too so there's a few selections again it's hard to kind of get into them because of course the first thing you do when you listen to those kind of things is that you miss going out but i think in terms of kind of keeping that um sense of a uh, weekend spirit or weekend energy alive i think it's a good idea to kind of leave those things for the weekend leave it for friday slap it on in the background while you're doing the hoover or whatever it may be and enjoy and skank around 